square root. Well, we have two different words here. They basically are used interchangeably. Slight technicality. They're a little bit different from each other, but we have radicals. The radical is the actual symbol here that we're using, and a square root. The square root is the number that you multiply times itself to give you whatever is underneath the radical. All right, so the square root of 36. If you remember how to do this, you say, self, what number times itself is 36? And you'll come up with 6. Now, another answer is possibly negative 6. What? Negative 6 times itself is also 36, but we don't consider that because this is the principal square root. We'd put a negative in front if we meant negative 6. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's do another example. Square root of, or radical, 64. What do you think? That's 8. Awesome. Next one. Square root of 40. All right. That's it. A lot of kids will throw out 20 because their brains will start freezing. No, it's not 20. It's somewhere between, uh, what do we got? 6 times 6 is 36. All right. So 6 squared is 36. And 7 squared is 49. It's somewhere in the middle. It's kind of closer to 6. So maybe 6.4. I don't know. I can't get the exact value. But what we want to do, that this whole lesson, what it's about is pulling perfect squares out of the square root. So, for example, out of 40, I know that that is the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, and the square root of 4 simplifies to 2 radical 10. Well, you don't understand the whole process yet, but what we're going to use is the product property of radicals, which means you can take two factors, so two numbers that multiply to 40, and you can break them up. And that's what we did right here. So we took 40, we broke it up into 4 times 10, and the 4 will simplify. That's how we're going to simplify our radicals. Now, what steps are we going to have to use? Well, we're going to write all those down right here. Okay, first to simplify, we're going to use the product property. We just talked about that. So that means that two factors multiply to whatever's under the radical. You can separate them. All right, now, the first thing we're going to have to do, and students always have a hard time with this. I have no idea why. This is our perfect squares number line. All right, so 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. You would be surprised how many students want this number line because they cannot recreate it. Students, it is just the number on the bottom times itself. Okay, 7 times 7 is 49, so on and so forth. You keep going up. Now, do you need to write out the whole number line? Eh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of helps. But if you wanted to write out just the perfect squares, I could see how that could be helpful too. I mean, 0 times 0. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. See what I'm doing here? I'm just writing a list down. Now, it is important that you have at least the list so you can check every number. You're going to see that that's very important as we go on. Okay, next, step one, write the perfect squares number line or a list of perfect squares. I'll settle for the list if you, you know, you're a little bit lazy. Sometimes I get that way a little bit, like brush. Sorry. Step two, we're going to start at a given number. Okay, the number they give you in the problem, and you're going to check each perfect square on the top of the number line, or in this case in your list, uh, until you find a factor of the given number. Write that number first under a radical. All right, so let's actually go through a problem here, because that's a lot of words, and that looks a little bit confusing. But if we're doing an example, throw out a perfect square. I'm sorry, throw out a square root. 72. All right, so we want to simplify the square root of 72. So how would that work? All right, so... Step one, write the perfect square number line. We did that. Is 72 on the number line? No, because if, if it was, it just simplified. Like square root of 64 is 8. So I just write whatever it is equal to. But we know it's between 8 and 9. So, you know, it's 8 point something. All right. So I wrote that down. Start at the number given in the problem. So this is 72. So I'm going to start at 72 on the top here. I'm going to check each one of these numbers at the top. And I'm going to find the first factor of 72. All right, so is 64, I'm going to work my way down also, is 64 a factor of 72? No, it's not. So I can kind of cross it out, or if you want to do that in your head, or just whatever. Is 49? No, it is not. Is 36? Yes. And that is the number that no one will think of. We write that down first, square root of 36. Now it's 36 times what? Times 2. Now, students never think of 36. This is why the number line, or at least a list here that goes up to maybe 100 or, or 225 make your list long enough and you can start and work your way down if I had the list here alright I'd work down I check 81 I check 64 49 and 36 yes that is a factor of 72 you're looking for numbers that multiply to 72 well because I found 36 that number will simplify that is just simply 6 because look it's on the number line 36 
simplifies to whole number regular old six. The square root of two kind of hangs out and stays. And guess what? We're all done. All right, let's fill in the rest of our steps here. All right, so step three, write the other factor second under the radical. So we found 36. We write that first under a radical. 36 times what? Times two. That's step three. So we write that second under a radical. And then you simplify the first one. The first one should always simplify because you found it on top of the number line. All these numbers simplify perfectly. And you check those numbers. So your first factor here will always simplify if you write it that way. And you're done. How many steps is that? Like one, two, oh, I broke it down into four, but really it's like two or three steps. I mean, let's be honest. I'm going to show you how some other teachers oops, may choose to teach this. I'm going to tell you why I prefer this method. All right, so square root of 72. We did it our way. So you check the number lines. You get 36 and 2, and you get 6 radical 2, and you're done. Okay, now other ways to do it. There are other ways, and you know, no way is any more better than the others. I guess, theoretically, but, you know, most students will say, oh, well, that's 8 times 9. Okay, that works. But guess what? If you simplify that 9 to a 3 and you have 3 radical 8, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing's wrong, but it's not simplified because that 8 still goes. Okay, we can break that 8 down into what? Oh, okay, 4 and 2. Okay, and that square root of 4, what's that equal to? 2. Do you see how this is getting convoluted? This is crazy. So you can take that 2 and that 3, and guess what? You get 6, and there's a radical 2 left over. You know, you get the same answer. But this way is two steps every single time because you're always checking the factors, and the largest factor you're going to come to first because you start at the number, you work your way down, so the largest factor will be first. It's always going to be two steps. This is simple. Let's do some more examples here, shall we? We shall. Oh, we have nothing there. All right. Square root of 12. All right, so we're going to check them. I'm going to write actually the list this time. So we have 0 times 0. We'll never use that. We'll never use 1 times 1 either. Why do I have you write those down? I have no idea to tell you the truth. Maybe so you, you see this is a list that's generated by perfect squares. It's not that difficult. I'm going to have to go up to 200 for number 3. That's crazy. But I can do it. Let's keep going. What comes after 100? That's 10 times 10. 11 times 11. 12 times 12. 13 times 13. 14 times 14. 15 times 15 is 225. So there's my list of perfect squares. All right, so 12. That's only right here. I don't have to go way down here. So is 9 times any other factor going to give you a 12? No. You can cross it off. Is 4? Yes. So you write the 4 down. 4 times what? 3. So that radical 4 turns into a what? A 2. So it's 2 radical 3. Done. See how simple that was? Two steps. Voila! Okay, 98's right here. Is 81 a factor of 98? No, it is not. Is 64? No. Is 49? Yes! Like, you can check these things. Square root of 49 times square root of 2. What is the square root of 49? 7. So this one is 7 radical 2. Done! This is so simple. Trust me. This is so simple. Square root of 200. Okay, 200 is way down here. So I check it. You know, once you develop your, your it's called numeracy skills. That's big words. Okay, somebody explain this to Bruss. But your numeracy skills tell you that, hey, the, the biggest, fa the first factor that's even possible is half of 200, like 100. 100 times 2. Well, that actually is what works. So the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. What's the square root of 100? 10. You will never have to worry about that second number simplifying. This is so cake. This is cake. Let's throw a number in front and see what happens. Can we get our number line back? Okay, so there's our number line. It goes up to 225. What is that? 15 times 15. 16 times 16 is 256. Uh, so we'll check that. No, not a factor, not a factor. We're looking here. We're only looking at the 300. We're going to let that negative 4 kind of chill out in front for a while. So what number, 225, no, it's going to multiply to 300. Guess what? It's going to be 100. 100 times what? We write the perfect square first, so it's 100 times 3. All right, so now what? Well, that first perfect square will always simplify. So that simplifies, uh-oh, I just made a common mistake students make. That simplifies to regular old 10. You see that students make that mistake all the time. They take the square root of 100, they make it the square root of 10, which is the square root of something else. No, once you figure out what the square root of 100 is, there's no more radical sign. But that 3 still has one because we haven't simplified it. So now we simply have to do negative 4 times 10, which is negative 40 
radical 3. All right, we're done with number 4. How about 5? Well, we have 2 radical 18. All right, so I check 18. That's right here in the number line. 16 is not a factor. 9 is. So that 2 is chilling. Okay, 18 is 9 times 2. And the square root of 9, that simplifies into a 3. So it's 2 times 3 with a radical 2 hanging out. So what's 2 times 3? It's 6 radical 2. Done with that one. How about 10 times the square root of 108? All right, now these are the ones that are going to make your mind, they're going to split a little bit. But you have this number line you can check. You only need to check these numbers. So 100 is not a factor, 81 is not, 64 is not, 49 is not, 36. Oh, wait a second, 36. That looks like it could be. What if I do times 3? 8, 1, guess what? 108. That works. All right, so that 10 is chilling. Square root of 36 times the square root of 3. That first perfect square will always simplify. Uh-oh, my keyboard just went away. Simplify to what? 6. So it's 10 times 6, a regular 6 times the square root of 3. That's 60 radical 3. Done. All right, how about square root of 33? All right, check it. 25, no. 16, no. 9, no. 4, no. 1. Well, 1's a factor of everything. Remember those first two? We're not going to use those first two. Guess what? That's already simplified. Done, because it doesn't have any perfect squares. Now, yeah, some of you say, well, wait. 3 times 11, Mr. Kelly... They both multiply to 33. You're right, but the 3 and 11, they don't simplify. So we gain no benefit in breaking this down into 3 and 11. This is what students don't, like, we only care about perfect squares. Students need to see this. All right, so I'm not going to break it down to 3 and 11. That does us no good. All right, why don't you do the last two all by yourself? Go! Okay, so here are my two answers here. Uh, for a thousand, sorry if I made you draw out a little extra numbers there. That goes forever, by the way, but the first perfect square is actually 100, 100 times 10. And you can kind of check that because there's no other perfect squares that will come out of 10, so you know that it's got to be 100. I know a lot of you saw that and said, oh, 100 times, you know, it's got to be 100 times 10. Anyways, negative 10, because that negative's chilling. Negative 10, this much is 10, radical 10, and that's what our final answer is there. And negative square root of 26, well, 26, you check it over here, no, 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 no. Nothing goes into 26, so we just keep it the way it is. How about that? Simple enough? You betcha.